So our next topic is light propagation through optical fiber. So in this particular topic, what we have to consider is only the light propagation through the optical fiber. So what are the parameters involved when we discuss about the light propagation through optical fiber that we have to consider like the numerical aperture, like the acceptance angle and uh, the types of optical fiber and how it can be defined, how the number of mode can be defined, how we can define the cutoff wavelength. So these all are we have to consider in case of light propagation through optical fiber. So in light propagation, uh, as you know that this optical fiber is used to carry the light. So first of all, we have to consider the structure of optical fiber. So let's consider uh, how this optical fiber looks like. So this is the structure of optical fiber. This is the structure of optical fiber. So this is the part in which the light propagates. So here the light incident and it propagates like this by the principle of total internal reflection. So this part in which the light propagates is called core of the optical fiber. So this is nothing but the core of the optical fiber. This part is known as the cladding. The outer region of the core is known as cladding. So this is the cladding. And this part is known as buffer jacket which provides shielding to the optical fiber. So this is the structure of optical fiber and what are the three different part of this core cladding and buffer jacket you can write this core. What is this core? So core is it carries the light The purpose of core is it carries the light, okay. So and is placed in and it is placed in center. This you can write and it is also made up of it is 
मेड अप ऑफ ग्लास मटेरियल हैविंग हाई रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स हाई रिफ्रेक्टिव इंडेक्स now what is the purpose of this cladding so the cladding is it is it used to it is used to keep it used to keep the light in the core means because of the cladding the light does not propagates through the cladding it because of the cladding the light keeps on traveling in the core itself so it is used to keep the light it is used to keep the light in the core and it is also made up of same material as that of core having low refractive index than core having low refractive index than core it means that the light travels from high refractive index to low refractive index and it is based on the principle of total internal reflection so total internal reflection occurs when the wave or the light propagates through high refractive index to low refractive index so it is traveling to core to cladding and that is why the total internal reflection is occurring we will discuss why this total internal reflection occurs and uh, this only happens when there is a propagation from higher density to lower density or the denser medium to rarer medium or the high refractive index to low refractive index now we are having the buffer jacket so what is the purpose of buffer jacket it is used to protect the optical fiber so the plastic coating that protects the optical fiber buffer jacket is nothing but plastic coating that protects the optical fiber plastic coating that protects the optical fiber so this is the core cladding and buffer jacket so this is only the structure of optical fiber now we have to consider that when the wave or the light travels from the uh, denser medium to rarer medium what are the parameters involved so that is considered in ray optic theory ray theory or ray optics theory now we are considering that we are having a interface like this and which is separating the two medium that means we are having the interface like this and above this there is some other medium and below this there is some other medium and we are calling it as glass and air the refractive index of the air is suppose n2 and the refractive index of glass is n1 so if this is the interface which is separating the two medium what is the normal of it so the normal of this plane is the perpendicular line to this normal so this is the perpendicular line this is the perpendicular line and it is normal so when the wave incident in this interface it will make an angle with the normal of the interface so it will make the angle let us say theta 1 so this is the incident light and some part of it 
will be reflected so the partial is reflected so this is our refracted wave reflected light okay and the some part of it may be some part that is reflected back partial and this angle is considered as theta 2 so what happens is whenever there is a two medium involved and the light is incident on the interface we can apply the Snell's law so from the Snell's law we can write the refractive index of the first medium sine of incident angle that is theta 1 is equal to refractive index of second medium and sine of theta 2. So this is the Snell's law. Now suppose I write sin theta 2 is equal to n1 by n2 sin theta 1. So because the medium is fixed, because the medium is fixed that is the glass and the air which is having the high refractive index and it is having the refractive index of 1, we know that the refractive index of air is 1 but and the, for the glass it is obviously greater than 1. So that is that nothing but the uh, wave or the light is traveling from the denser medium to rarer medium. So denser to rarer and the, there is a chance of total internal reflection and whenever the light travels through the denser to rarer it moves away from the normal. That is why this is uh, this wave is traveling uh, with the higher angle that is the theta 2 is higher. So it is moving towards uh, it is moving away from the normal and then transmitted. So if since the medium is fixed this refractive index will be fixed and when the theta 1 is increases if theta 1 increases theta 2 also increases. So what does it mean? So if you incident a light making an angle greater than theta 1, this refracted light will even uh, making an angle more than the previous one. That is, it is even away from the normal, more away from the normal. That means if you increase the theta 1, theta 2 is increases. So this theta 2 is increasing here, here and here. So it is increasing like this. That means it will make a angle of 90 degree for certain incident angle. So that angle is known as the critical angle. What is the critical angle? So here the first parameter which we are defining is the critical angle. Critical angle, angle of incidence for which angle of incidence for which refracted light travels parallel to the interface or theta 2 become 90 degree okay so this is the interface this is the normal the wave incident with the angle theta i theta 1 which is equal to theta c and the theta 2 become 90 degree which is parallel to the interface this is the light which is now traveling so here the angle is theta 2 is 90 degree 
and this is air, uh, this is glass with refractive index N1 and this is air with refractive index N2. So this is the case. When the angle of incident equal to the critical angle or the angle of incidence is so much high that the theta 2 become 90 degree, that this theta 2 become 90 degree. So that corresponding angle of incidence is called critical angle. So using Snell's law, we get N1 sin theta C because the angle of incidence is equal to the critical angle. This is theta C is equal to N2 sin and the theta 2 become 90 degree. So theta 2 become 90 degree. So this sin theta C is equal to N2 by N1 or the value of critical angle is sin inverse N2 upon N1. So here we are talking about the N2 and N1 which is the refractive index of the air and the glass. So how can we define the refractive index? We have already done it in the case of uh, plane wave also. So refractive index is N equal to the velocity of light in vacuum or air divided by velocity of light in medium and velocity of light in vacuum is given by C and here it is given by phase velocity and we also know that this phase velocity is written as root over mu epsilon and for a non-magnetic medium for non-magnetic medium This F mu r, this mu r is 1. This mu r equal to 1. Hence, this refractive index n is equal to c root over mu naught mu r epsilon naught epsilon r and it can be written as c upon c root over epsilon r and mu r is 1 and root over mu naught epsilon naught is 1 upon c. So, we are having root over epsilon r. That means the refractive index is epsilon r. So this theta c is equal to sin inverse of root over epsilon r2 divided by epsilon r1. So this can also be the definition of critical angle or the formula for the critical angle. So it means that when the light travels from the first medium to second medium, so the critical angle is sine inverse of root over permittivity of the second medium to the permittivity of the first medium. So if it is important that by which medium the light is traveling into this which medium. So the light is traveling in the from the glass to air. So that means the sine inverse of the permittivity of air divided by permittivity of glass. So epsilon r2 n2 is nothing but the refractive index of the second medium. So it is the ratio of the second medium to the first medium by which the light is traveling. So, okay, so the critical angle sine inverse is root over epsilon r2 upon epsilon r1 and also n2 upon n1. So these are the formula for the critical angle. Now if you keep on increasing the angle of incidence, if you keep on increasing angle of incidence, so there will be some angle after which this light will reflect into the same medium. It will come back to the same medium and that particular is the case of the total internal reflection. That means if I increase the angle of incidence greater than the theta c, as we can see that when the angle of incidence is exactly equal to theta c, it is now parallel to the interface. Now if I increase the angle of incidence greater than critical angle, then the now light will, the reflected wave, reflected wave will make more angle with the normal and it will come back to the same medium that is glass. So the case of total internal reflection.
that is known as TIR which is the basic principle of optical fiber. So total internal reflection occurs when angle of incidence becomes greater than when angle of incidence become greater than critical angle TIR total internal reflection occurs and in the diagram you can represent in this way this is the interface and the light is incident with the angle theta 1 which is greater than theta c now so the light is completely reflected back to the glass on glass itself there will be no light in the second medium so this is tir totally internally reflected light so this is the case of total internal reflection Now the total internal reflection you can occur, count the number of reflections, number of total internal reflection you can count. So this number of total internal reflection you can write formula for this is you can write this formula. It is the ratio of length of optical fiber divided by skip distance. Length of optical fiber divided by skip distance. This is the formula. Now the total internal reflection we can also calculate with the help of uh, for an optical fiber that is the skip distance and the skip distance is nothing but the successive distance between the two reflection. Successive distance between two total internal reflection. So if I make a optical fiber, suppose this is the cross section and uh, this is the core. And this is the core axis. So suppose the light incident from here and it totally internally reflected by the core cladding interface. And this is the core axis. So this distance is A and this distance is skip distance suppose ls so the distance between the total internal reflect two successive reflection so suppose from here to here or you can also calculate from like this either this distance or this distance both will be same this distance or this distance both will be same so we are calculating the distance between these two this is known as skip distance. So the in the core axis where the light meets successive the meeting of with the core axis. So the, and the light meets on the core axis at this point and after total internal reflection we get the light at in the core axis at this point. So this is the core axis. This dotted line is nothing but the core axis. So how can we calculate this and the normal which is the normal. So normal is this one because see if this is the this is the interface then in the left we, it is free space that is air and in the right we are having a core and cladding that means this is the interface which is separating the two medium so what is the normal of this interface this dotted line is the normal of this interface so 
it is nothing but cladding and this is also cladding and this is core so what is this skip distance or uh, length of the optical fiber if you want to calculate so skip distance you can calculate if it is directly given to you then it is okay and if it is not given to you then also you can calculate it with the help of this formula so this skip distance is given by 2a upon 10 theta 2 and what is this theta 2 and theta 1 so as we know that this theta 1 and theta 2 is nothing but the angle that the light makes with the normal so what is the normal here as i told you that this is the plane which is separating the two medium in the which the light is incidenting so light is incidenting from air and it is going to the core so this core is having a different refractive index and this free space is which is air and having the different refractive index so light is incidenting from the air to this core that means there is a two medium and the medium is separated by this plane that is this line so this line is having the normal which is represented by this green line dotted line green dotted line so the angle it makes with the normal of the interface so it will make the angle theta 1 with the normal and it is the angle theta 2 which it is making with the normal so this is theta 2 and this is theta 1 so the skip distance is given by ls equal to 2a upon 10 theta 2 or 2a upon root over uh, you can write n1 upon sin theta 1 whole square minus 1 this is the formula okay so this is the formula for skip distance and once you calculate the skip distance you can substitute the value of skip distance here and calculate the total number of reflection because the length of the fiber will be given to you if it is asked about the number of total internal reflection okay so skip distance is the distance between the two successive reflection of the ray so the two successive reflection of the ray is this one this is the two successive reflection or you can consider from here to here that gives the same distance now uh, what is the a so you can have the value of a that is simple the radius of the radius of a is the radius of core and here we have written 2a so 2a is the diameter of the core so this diameter of the core is nothing but 2a so this is all about the uh, total internal reflection and how many number of reflection you can calculate from this light optical theory